All right, Successful Indie Author, 5-Minute Focus, Episode 231, Working with Proofreaders. When you're working with proofreaders, and this isn't about how to get proofreaders, I might talk about that at the end, but for now, it's once you have your proofreading team, it's important that you set the parameters. And this is, here's what we would like you to look for. Uh, treat them like real humans. They're doing you a huge, huge favor. Damn it. Got the low internet. So I'm going to do the video and we'll keep going. <clears throat> All right. So you set the parameters and the parameters are, are simple as look for typos in addition to character inconsistencies. This will be a good uh, set for your, your folks to read through and just look for typos. They're not looking for anything else. Uh, maybe inconsistencies. You have a character in one place and then uh, a little bit later, he or she is in a completely different place doing something completely different. And uh, that's a, a little bit of a miscue. Another thing that I ask uh, my proofreaders to look for is wherever they might stop reading, it, it, where they just uh, they're reading it and it's bad. Uh, this, this pulls me out of the story. I just want to stop reading. Please identify those for me because they'll feel that way, maybe. And if they do, you really want to take care of that and go after it and fix that part of your manuscript. And it's a free read. These uh, these good people are going through your stuff ahead of launch. So it's important and really valuable that you can fix this stuff ahead of time because it could be something very simple in the paragraph that puts you your readers into a place that you really don't want to put them. <clears throat> uh, also, platitudes are great. Uh, proofreaders need to feel valued. So you have to. And they're doing you a huge favor, a huge service. Uh, don't do them a disservice by uh, just taking their input and never, never communicating with them again. You want to thank them, uh, give them a copy of the book, give them a printed copy, signed copy of the paperback. Whatever you do for your proofreaders, do it and be consistent about it and take good care of them because they are worth their weight in gold if they're giving you good feedback. Sometimes I've had a lot of proofreaders that'll come back and say, oh, I like it, read well, and forever by the title. And then I'll have uh, proofreaders that come back with 20, 30 typos and they're typos. It's like, oh my God, how could you miss 30 typos? Sometimes missing words, sometimes really uh, uh, the homonyms where you get those words gone uh, wrong, past for past, and uh, you can tell, oh my God. As, and uh, so those kind of proofreaders, uh, maybe those aren't your best teammates, but sometimes they work well as, as team members, as just giving you a bolster of, hey, I love this book, or I didn't, it, this book didn't do that well for me. Maybe that's uh, all you need these, uh, some of the, your proofreaders for is to help you just, just say this is an okay book because I, you're an author, you're listening to me, uh, and <clears throat> You've had those moments where you're thinking, ah, my books suck. We all do. We all have books that we think suck. And uh, some of them sell a lot better than others. And it helps when the uh, the proofreaders say, no, this is a good book. And it helps to calm those fears. And then you put it out there and try to sell it if uh, it's the best book ever. Because that's what you got to do. You have to uh, and uh, make it easy on your proofreaders. Don't send them edit or be not saying professionally edited, but they ha it has to be edited. You can't use your proofreaders as editors where they're checking commas and, and fixing your quotes and uh, dialogue tags and, and fixing your grammar. Hey, your present tense, this paragraph, your past tense, the next one. You, you can't do that to your proofreaders because the more stuff you give them, the more they're going to miss. And then your end product, it's going to be a, it's going to be a mishmash. It's going to be a crosshatch of stuff. And you don't want to do that to your readers. Have, you want to give your proofreaders an, as absolutely clean a manuscript as you can get. <clears throat> so do it upright. Make sure it's edited before you give it to your proofreader. that it's in the best shape it can possibly be in because the proofreaders are your last line of defense to make sure it's right before it goes to the market. You have to have a level of trust with your proofreaders. Uh, you get them the manuscript before anybody else so you just, you can't treat them like they're going to steal your, your story and put it out on the internet. Just simply ask them, please do not share this anywhere else. This is for you and for me, and you're helping me, and I really appreciate it. And the more you appreciate them, the less likely they're going to be uh, jerking you around or doing you a great disservice by stealing your stuff. 
Uh, and I, I can't imagine working with a reader who would do that because I don't bring a proofreader on board unless I know who they are and they've already established themselves as somebody looking out for my best interest, not uh, trying to get free stuff or trying to get ahead or trying to establish their own bona fides as as a, uh, a, a mover and a shaker. They are. But uh, are, are they helping you? and not hurting you. And this is something you have to trust them. So don't bring them on board unless you already have uh, something that you're doing to, uh, to assess. How is this person going to impact my life and how, what are they doing already? So that's about it. It's, uh, oh my God, almost six minutes. Proofreaders, they are the last line of defense. Treat them like gold because they are. They will make sure that the best manuscript uh, possible hits the, uh, hits the, the market. And proof number of proofreaders, I currently have anywhere from four to 20. Uh, 20 is hard to manage, uh, but uh, four is an absolute minimum. Uh, one or two, they're going to miss stuff. And I prefer putting stuff out there that doesn't have missed stuff in it. All right, everybody. And, and I do have stuff out there that has typos still. It's okay. Uh, but you try to cut those down as much as possible, and your proofreaders will help you do that. All right, everybody. Peace, fellow humans.